Hi, my name is Dan Corbett and I'm the founder and managing partner of Black Iron Group. Today I'm going to talk to you and demonstrate the power of managing inventory in the Salesforce platform using Accounting Seed. But first, a shameless plug. Black Iron is in our 18th year, and so for 18 years we've helped customers refine their sales and service processes, extend their marketing reach, and automate and grow their businesses. That's kept customers and Salesforce coming back to us, and for that we're very grateful. On today's demo, I'm going to demonstrate an accounting product, but uh, as a straight C accounting student, I'm not going to veer too much into the total accounting processes. Suffice it to say, Accounting Seed is a world-class accounting system and can manage sophisticated accounting requirements like multi-company, geo variability, multi-currency, multi-ledger, and on and on. I'll provide a way to reach out to Accounting Seed at the end of this video. Today, what I'm going to show is how you can manage inventory inside of the Accounting Seed system and on the Salesforce platform. For many manufacturers and distributors, inventory management is kind of a siloed, closed-off process, typically managed in ERP and available only to a select few users within the organization. But what if we could do that on the Salesforce platform, essentially eliminating the need for integration and opening up the results to the rest of the sales and the operations team? Now, Accounting Seed gives us that ability. With solid ways to manage both component and finished goods inventory, sophisticated sales order processing, automated PO management and receiving, warehouse location control, and finished goods inventory build, all built into the Salesforce platform. And with the App Exchange, we can even take it further. While I won't go into the details regarding these tools, Accounting C can be enhanced to use uh, taxes, to accept credit cards, and even accept uh, EDI orders through various uh, platforms out on the system. But why talk to you about it when I can show it to you? Let's dig into a scenario. I'm going to walk you through a process for a particular customer. Now, this customer sells hydraulic and pneumatic pumps and presses for use in manufacturing processes. The sales reps build quotes and opportunities for initial sales with their customers, but call center and EDI typically receives the orders. These orders are for finished goods, but building the inventory from components is a weekly process that requires sufficient component inventory to be on hand in the right warehouse at the right time. The process that I'm going to flow is going to illustrate that to you here in the coming, uh, coming slides. So here we are in the Salesforce platform. And one of the things that I'll say over and over again in any of these videos is that uh, Salesforce is very flexible. So this is simply an example of an accounting, uh, accounting seed homepage, but it can certainly be anything you want it to be. And it can be different for different types of users as well as, well, as we kind of walk through the system. Uh, Salesforce organizes itself by tabs that you see across the top here, and those tabs indicate different functionality kind of within the tool. I'm going to start by showing you an opportunity. And an opportunity in Salesforce, as you probably already know, is where we gather pipeline information. We talk about the size of the deal, the expected date that we're going to get it, and what stage we're in as we sort of work through the process. In this particular client, uh, the, the opportunity is sort of a gateway into the system and not necessarily the place where we, where we kind of commit to our sales order. But in this example, I am going to show you that quickly. So on the opportunity, I've got all of the details about the, about the opportunity itself, and I've got the products listed here that I'm going to sell. In this case, I'm going to sell a flat, sell, uh, flat press, a quantity of five for around uh, $999 for a total of just, uh, just south of five grand. And if I win this deal, I can then create a sales order from that, which will automatically build out the first record we need in the inventory control process. Sales orders in, sales, in, in accounting seed give me the ability to capture the information that I need about the deal itself. And you'll see here in a second when I get to the products that the accounting treatment is sort of captured automatically inside of that sales order. You can see the detail, which is a mimic and mirror image of the opportunity we just looked at, uh, in addition to some other products that I've added on to the sales order itself. So I've got my products kind of listed here as sales order lines. I've got my sales order listed here. The first thing I need to do is allocate my uh, inventory. So take it out of a warehouse and put it into the system. And so if I click the allocate button, a 
Accounting Seed loads up a custom inventory screen that allows me to indicate uh, where this inventory is coming from and what quantity. I can pick it from a single warehouse and say I've got all six from here, or I can say I'm picking you know, th three pieces from here and three pieces from here. However I want to put this together, I can grab that information and allocate that inventory out to this particular sales order. That in turn gives me the ability to then create a pick list so that I can take this and start to build this out, out in the warehouse. I could go out and pick that inventory, I can pack it and then prepare for shipment. Essentially grabbing this information, allocating that inventory, gives me the ability to capture that information and eventually write it to the GL. If I look into one of the individual products, in this case the flat press we were talking about earlier, you'll notice that the accounting kind of piece is already captured for me here on the, on the product record itself. So I automatically know what revenue account I'm writing to, what my cost of goods sold, and what my inventory is going to be based on the item. So this information essentially gives me the ability to post this uh, at the sales order level, right? We were looking at earlier. I can post this record. And when I post, that's automatically going to give me the accounting treatment to debit inventory, credit cost of goods sold, you know, the whole bit, getting a C in counting. So, but essentially help me put that together. Now you'll notice over here on the right-hand side, that I've got inventory quantity available. Remember when I allocated a little earlier, earlier? This is where it was picking up that data from. It was essentially saying for the flat press, I've got this quantity listed in these warehouses in these locations, right? So the Burlington warehouse, I've got uh, inventory in location one and location three. And in the Fairfield warehouse, I've got inventory in location 800. So. I can have multi-warehouses, I can have multi-locations within a warehouse, and I can allocate across that inventory location spectrum for a particular product to satisfy, to satisfy a sales order. Digging down a little further, if I look at the components, you'll notice the parts that make up my finished good. And this is where we kind of get into a rudimentary bill of materials sort of processing. In this example, a flat press is made of a pump controller, a pump housing, a pump motor, and four pieces of tubing to kind of connect all this together. These pieces, as a, as a component, give me the ability to create a flat press finished good, put that in inventory, and await allocation for sales. But in this case, I'm going to need to order some of these goods in order to get it here. And, you know, Salesforce can do this, or Accounting Seed can do this on demand. You can create a purchase order, as you probably saw here from this button. But I think the better way to do this is to automatically reorder this based on uh, minimum stock, order up quantities, and safety stock. So for tubing, for example, I've got a safety stock quantity of 150, and I've got a minimum order quantity of 50. Sorry, 150 and 50. I've also got a lead time of 21 days, so that tells me I need to kind of be ready to order this when it gets below 150 at a minimum of, of 50 apiece, and I've got to have three weeks lead time to kind of put this together. So at this point, I can create a purchase order manually, like I said, or we can write jobs in the back that automatically go through there and use the lead time, the safety stock, and the minimum order quantity to figure out when I need to order this, and it'll simply write the purchase orders for me. They'll wait over here in the purchase order tab, and we've got the ability to prove them as those orders kind of come through. When I create a purchase order, I've got essentially the information that I need. If I've got um, multiple vendors that I order this from. I can pick either a default or I can uh, buy it from a specific vendor at a specific time. That information essentially gives me the purchase order information here, where I'm writing it to, who my vendor is, uh, what my expected ship date is, what my amount is, uh, and then I capture the purchase order lines that I'm buying from, in this case, Allied Technologies. You kind of see that listed over here. At some point, this inventory is going to come into my warehouse, and at that point, I'll receive the goods into inventory. And when I get to that point, I've got my items listed here from my vendor, and I simply capture what warehouse I want this to go into, maybe they're all going into Burlington, and what location I want that inventory to go to. And once I've got that put together and I get my quantities kind of captured here, and this can default in if I need it to, I can also have the user basically type this in or if they're using their phone, kind of scan it in. I grab this information and I save, and that writes that back into inventory. Remember back when we looked at the product a while ago, I captured all the accounting treatment at that item level uh, for the product. And so when I post this, that essentially moves that inventory into inventory and captures the GL accounting treatment behind the scenes as well. 
I can create a PO from this if I want to, an actual printable version of this, or I can skip that and just kind of go straight to create payable so that I know when I get there, I've got to create an invoice and, uh, and pay for it. I'm not going to show that. That's the accounting treatment, but I've got the ability to do that right from here. We can automate that as well. Finally, because we're in the Salesforce platform natively as we put this together, the regular dashboard and reporting engines, kind of famous in Salesforce lore, are available to us to write reports on this. So I can quickly get a picture of what my orders look like, sales orders for a particular account, what they look for for each one of my products as I sort of put this together. Uh, I've got shipment forecasts, won't show it in a second. But essentially, I can take that data plus my pipeline data around my opportunity itself and capture all of that in a single place, no integration necessary. So what's next? We'd love to hear from you. Reach out to Black Iron Group by sending us an email at info at blackirongroup.com or by calling me, Dan Corbett, numbers on the screen. You can also reach out to Accounting Seed directly at rburns at accountingseed.com or go through your sales village rep who can obviously account, uh, kind of connect you to Accounting Seed as well. I appreciate your time and attention. Thanks for joining.